exponents. And so as you look at the uh, pattern that we see here, as, as we look down the, the line, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 2nd power is 4, and 2 to the 1st is 2. And so as we go, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and we're just dividing by 2 all the way down. Now as you look at it then, since we are dividing by 2 all the way through here, when I go to the power of 0, 2 divided by 2 is actually going to be 1. So one misconception is that anything to the power of 0 is 0. That, that is actually false. Anything to the power of 0 is going to end up being 1, uh, assuming that a is some number other than 0 itself. And so as long as a is not 0, anything to the power of 0 is going to equal 1. And so you can get, you know, kind of a complicated problem here like x, y, z to the fourth. And if I take that to the power of 0, remember our properties with multiplication here. I'm going to bring that into all three of those. So I'd have x to the power of 0, y to the power of 0, z to the power of 0. And then to the power of 0 is 1, power of 0 is 1, power of 0 is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 gives me 1. So keep track of that. Anything to the power of 0 is just going to end up equaling 1. Now as I look at it, then I can continue on with my pattern here. I have 2 to the negative first power. I can continue to divide by 2. And so 2 to the negative first is going to be a half. Half of that is going to be a fourth. Half of that is going to be an eighth. And half of that is going to be a sixteenth. Now as I go through there, then I can see a lot of similarity here between the negative exponents and the positive exponents. 2, 4, 8, 16. 2, 4, 8, 16. And so as I look at that, notice what's happening here with the negative exponents. The negative exponents are really just uh, there a a as a way to create a fraction, as a way to create the smaller numbers that we'd have there. And, and so as you look at it, just using that base form there, when I have that negative exponent, all that's doing is it's taking that positive exponent and, and it's writing it so that it's not a fraction. And so a to the negative nth power is 1 over a to the nth power. So let's look at a problem with negative exponents now. And as, as we think of one, let's just go 4 divided by x to the negative fifth power. And as you do this, remember what that negative exponent does there. What that negative exponent does is it's just a way of writing a um, fraction in a more condensed way. And so x to the negative fifth, remember, means the same as 1 over x to the positive fifth power. And so that's really what it is. And so as I try to simplify this problem, really what I'm looking at is that I have uh, a fraction within a fraction. And to get rid of that, remember, we multiply by the reciprocal. And so on top here, I have 4. To write 4 as a fraction, I write it as 4 over 1. And I'm going to multiply that times the reciprocal of 1 over x to the fifth, which is x to the fifth over 1. Now, 4 times x to the fifth, that's 4x to the fifth. 1 times 1 is just 1, so I don't need to put it on there. So I have 4x to the fifth here. Now, this is a, a part here. We, we do have a shortcut where we can actually kind of go through here and cancel out this middle part if we want to. And so if, if you want to kind of get rid of that middle part there, you sort of can by knowing the shortcut. And the shortcut is anytime you have a negative exponent, you can bring it to the opposite side. And so if I, I can take that and bring it up to the top right away. And so the negative 5 is on the x. And so that goes to the top. Now, when it goes to the top, it becomes positive. And so the negative tells you to bring it up. Once you bring it up to the top, the negative's done its job. You can get rid of the negative there. And so let's look at just another um, a quick one here. Let's go uh, 4y to the 6 over x to the negative 4th. Uh, and let's put a z to the negative 3rd on this one. As you look at this one, we, we got positive exponent of 1 here. We got a positive exponent of 6 here. Those aren't going to go anywhere. Those are going to stay there. But I have a negative exponent here. When you have a negative exponent, that switches sides. I have a negative exponent here, and so I have to switch that around. And so as I look at this, I still have the 4y to the 6 on top because those did not have negative exponents. Those just stay where they're at. To get rid of this negative exponent, though, I have to do... Um, what I talked about earlier there, I have to bring it to the opposite side there. And so I'm going to actually bring that down to uh, the denominator here. And so that's going to be z cubed. And the x to the negative 4, it has a negative again, so I have to bring that up. And so I'm going to have x to the 4th. Notice that the negative does get taken off when you bring it to the other side. So 
Negative exponents will cause it to switch sides because of the math that happens when you multiply by the reciprocal. The negative is just a notation that is used to describe a fraction.